So we've learned how to obtain the oxidation numbers of elements within a compound. Sometimes it's very simple. The examples we talked about are looking at Ag plus going to Ag. Well, obviously Ag has a plus one oxidation state here and a zero oxidation number over here. To go from one to zero, clearly this is a reduction. In our second example, chlorine is starting with an oxidation state of negative one, and that's going to zero. It is actually increasing in oxidation state. Oxidation is the loss of electrons. That's an oxidation. So in this particular case, the electrons would have to be gained on this side. In this particular case, the electrons would have to be lost on this side. I put two in there because I had two chlorines. Now, what we said is in a compound, it's not that simple. This is starting with a negative one charge and finishing at zero, which may make us think this is an oxidation. But as we look at the oxidation numbers, manganese in this compound is actually at a plus seven oxidation state. And in this case, it's a plus four oxidation state. It's going from seven down to four. This is also a reduction, even though it's kind of looked like an oxidation. In this case, bromine starting at zero and is increasing to one. An increase in oxidation number is an oxidation. Now what we need to learn today is how do we balance these things? Because, hey, I've got four oxygens over here. I've got two here. I can't simply just add oxygens here because that would make no sense. There's not oxygen involved in the chemical reaction. So how do we rectify that? Let's learn how to balance redox reactions. So what we're going to need to do here is copy down the eight steps to success on balancing redox reactions. Specifically, we're going to be looking at those in an acidic solution. We're not going to worry about a basic solution. So let's just go through the steps and please write these down on a piece of scratch paper in your notes so you can use those as we practice. Okay, for step one, we write out each half reaction. In step two, we balance all the elements other than the hydrogen and the oxygen. We're going to be balancing the element that is undergoing the oxidation or reduction. In step three, we balance the oxygens by adding water molecules where needed. So we can add them to the left or to the right. In step four, we're going to balance the hydrogen atoms by adding hydrogen ions where needed. So you can see that acids and bases are actually going to be in play again because we're talking about that hydrogen ion. On step five, we're going to balance the charge by adding electrons because we know that we're going to be moving the electrons from one place to the other. The charge is going to be balanced by these electrons. Step six is going to be multiplying the half reactions in a manner that allows us to have the same number of electrons to be lost as gained. So if a reaction is losing five electrons, the other side has to be gaining five electrons. But we need to adjust that ratio so that the same number lost equals the same number that's gained. Step seven, we're gonna add the two half reactions together and we're going to then cancel the ions from opposite sides where we can. And the eighth step, it's self-explanatory. So now, let's take these eight steps and apply them to balancing a redox reaction. In this particular case, I've got hydrogen sulfide reacting with a nitrate ion to form nitrogen monoxide and sulfur. Our first step is to split this into the two half reactions. So I have my H2S, and obviously its partner is going to be the sulfur. In the second reaction, we've got the nitrate ion, and that is going to be forming the nitrogen monoxide. Now, we're gonna attack each half reaction separately up until the point where we add the reactions together. So the next step in this reaction would be to balance the element other than the hydrogens or oxygens. In this case, it says sulfurs. One sulfur here, one sulfur here. I don't need to add a coefficient in front of either one to balance the number of them. If I had an S2, for example, here, I'd put a two in front of that guy to balance the sulfurs, but I don't, so I won't. The next step is to balance, balance the oxygens by adding water. I have no oxygens on either side, so I can skip that step. Next step is to balance the hydrogens by adding H pluses. So I have two hydrogens on this side. 
I have none on this side. I'm going to add two hydrogens to this side. But again, they are H pluses. I need to account for that charge because the next step says to balance the charge by adding electrons. H2S has no charge. There's really no charge here. Now the total charge on this side, I've got a sulfur with no charge, but two hydrogens each with a plus one charge. So this side is a plus two. Now we're gonna add electrons to make sure that both sides have the same charge. It doesn't necessarily have to be zero, they just have to be the same. We add the electrons to the more positive side. If this side is zero, this side is plus two. I'm going to add two electrons to this side. It is losing electrons. Is that an oxidation or a reduction? Loss of electrons, oil rig, loss, oxidation. So that's my oxidation reaction. Now we're going to come back and we're going to look at this reaction. My first step is to balance the elements other than the oxygens or hydrogens. So the nitrogens, one on each side, I'm good. I don't need to worry about that. Second step, balance oxygens by adding waters. There are three oxygens on the left. There are one on the right. There's one. Um, I'm going to add two waters to this side to give a total of three oxygens on each side. Now the next step is to balance hydrogens by adding H pluses. So I'm going to add four hydrogens to this side. And again, they are H pluses. Now let's total up the total charge on both sides. I've got four pluses and a minus. This side is plus three right now. This side, well this has zero and this has zero, so the total charge on this side is zero. So we add electrons to the more positive side so that they become the same, which means I'm gonna to have to add three electrons to this side. Now we're gonna get into the tricky part. We have to make sure that the same number of electrons exist on both sides. So what we need to do is come up with a least common multiple for the electrons so that we have the same number being produced as consumed. In my oxidation, I'm losing two electrons. This is my reduction. I'm gaining three electrons. I have two and three. What is the least common multiple? Yes, it's six. So we have to multiply each reaction by a coefficient it's going to allow us to get six electrons on both sides. So this gets a little messy. What do we multiply this reaction by to get six electrons? Three. What do we multiply this by to get six electrons? Two. Now the fun begins. We're going to go through and multiply the three by all the coefficients. So this guy is going to become three. This guy is going to become 3. This 2 will become a 6. And this 2 will become a 6. Let's do the same thing down here. Gotta wait. We're going to multiply everything by 2. So the 3 becomes a 6. 4 becomes an 8. This becomes a 2. This becomes a 2 and this becomes a four. Now we've got the same number of electrons on both sides. Our next step is to cancel the electrons and anything else that we can cancel. For example, six electrons are on the left, I have six on the right. What I can do then is get rid of six from both sides. Goodbye electrons. Every reaction, if done correctly, the electrons will cancel. Now, you'll notice I have eight hydrogens here and six hydrogens here. So I can cancel six from both sides. I'm going to get rid of all of them here. Get rid of you guys. And if I've canceled six here, I'll be left with, I'll end up with two hydrogens on this side. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add the two reactions together. Order really isn't important. So we we'll just want everything on the left of the arrows to stay together, everything on the right of the arrows to stay together. So I have three H2Ss, hydrogen sulfide. I have two H pluses that weren't canceled. I have two nitrate ions. And then I have on this side, three sulfurs. I have two, two NO2, I'm sorry, two NOs. 
nitrogen monoxides, and I have four waters remaining. Now we can check our work. Two things have to be true here. The number of particles has to be balanced on both sides of the equation. Charge also has to be balanced. So let's just really quickly check our particles. I have three H2, so six hydrogens plus these two. I have eight hydrogens total. Over on this side, eight hydrogens. I have three sulfurs on this side. I have three sulfurs over here. I have two nitrogens. I've got two nitrogens on the right. Six oxygens. Well, here's two here and here's four here for a total of six. We're looking good. Now let's check charge. Three particles with zero charge, two with plus one, and two with minus one. The total charge on this side is zero. On the other side, three sulfurs with no charge, two of these guys with no charge, four waters with no charge, the total charge on this side is also zero. It balances for matter, it balances for charge. Now we can go to step number eight. That's nice work. Whew. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, here is another problem. I'm gonna to try to run through this one a little quicker without all the notations, uh, but still following the same steps. So, my first step is to split this guy into two half reactions. So I have the Cr3+, plus, and I reckon that guy is going to become the Cr207, dichromate ion, negative two charge. Make sure you track your charges. Uh, the other part of that reaction is going to be MnO2 forming Mn2+. Plus. So let's attack this top reaction first. Our first step is to count the elements other than the hydrogen or the oxygen. So I have one chromium here, but I have two chromiums on this side. So my first step is to fix the chromiums. Now I've got two chromiums on each side, I'm good. Next step, we're gonna balance oxygens by adding waters. No oxygens here, we have seven here. So I'm gonna add seven waters to this side. Now we balance the hydrogens by adding H pluses. 14 hydrogens on this side, none on this side. So now I add my 14 hydrogens to that side. Now, the total charge, seven waters with no charge, two chromiums with a plus three charge. And like I said, I kind of like to note the total charge is just above for a second. The total charge on the left is plus six. The Cr207, the dichromate has a negative two charge. We have 14 plus one charges. So that makes this side plus 12. So we add electrons to the more positive side. Looks like we're gonna need six electrons for that particular half reaction. Now, the manganese dioxide. Count the elements other than the oxygen or the hydrogens. One manganese, one manganese, we're good. Now we do our oxygens by adding waters. Two oxygens on that side, so let's add two waters on this side. That's a weird plus sign. Okay, four hydrogens on this side. We'll come back and add four H pluses to this side. Now we count total charge. Four pluses in this guy, which has no charge, gives me a plus four charge on this side. A plus two charge in two waters with no charge gives me a plus two charge on this side. So it looks like we're gonna have to add two electrons to the left. Okay, so we're done with that. Now we're gonna talk about the least common multiple. I've got six electrons on the top, I've got two on the bottom. So it looks to me like we should probably call least common multiple six. So let's go ahead and multiply this bottom reaction by three. So now we're gonna go through and multiply that three by all the coefficients. So this two will become a six. This four will become a 12. This will become a three. This will become a three. 
and this one will become a 6. So now we can start our canceling. Our 6 electrons always have to cancel. What else can we cancel? 12 hydrogens here, 14 here. Let's cancel 12 from each side. So you guys are gone. Cancel 12 of that 14. I would have two remaining. Let's cancel some waters. I've got six waters here and seven here. I can cancel six from both sides. That will leave me one water remaining. Now it's time to add them together. One water. Two CR3 pluses. Chromium-3 ions and three MnO2s forms the dichromate ion, two hydrogens, and the three Mn2 pluses. Now it's time to check our work. Number of hydrogens. I've got two on the left, I've got two on the right. Number of oxygens. I've got one here and six here, so there's a total of seven oxygens on the left. There's my seven on the right. Number of chromiums. I've got two on the left. I've got two on the right. I'm good there. The number of manganese. Three here, three here, and that is everything. Okay, total charge. Water has zero. I got two plus three charges and three charges with zero, so the total charge on the left is plus six. I've got a negative two, a positive two, and three positive twos here, so the total charge on this side is also plus six. That tells me I can go right to step eight right now and enjoy. Oh, so I realize that's a lot of steps. It does take a lot of practice, but if you follow the steps one by one, it is actually kind of fun. See the grin on my face? It's not that bad. We'll have some practice with it, and uh, I will see you in class soon. Good luck.